All right, we join Trofea La Guelia with 26 kilometers to go as they're going up the Capomella. And uh, it's a very, very good race. A lot of big names here. We've got Bernal, we've got Molimo on the front here, we've got Galdu, we've got Champuzan, got James Knox, Mikael Lander. I mean, there's everyone here. Um, Kwiatkowski, I believe, crashed out. Carlos Rodriguez. Uh, anyway, there was a break up growth that's just got caught. It was sort of a split in the bunch. Uh, but this climb isn't really too steep, like 3%, so pretty chill. Uh, the main climb really is the Colomicheri, which is two kilometers at 8.2%. And that's really where the decisive moves are gonna be made and where everything really is gonna happen uh, in terms of selections, uh, which we were about to see as they go along the Ligurian coast uh, towards the climb. Uh, it's a pretty sharp left-hander and it's pretty steep for a lot of it. Uh, at the moment, you can see we've got Chris Carlos Rodriguez, sorry, who did very, very well in uh, Provence. He's in, in there with Bernal for Ineos. You've got Van Sevenens, uh, Dries Devenens, James Knox for Quick Step. Pelo Bilbao, Molimo, you can see like there's, there's a lot of big names here, uh, a lot of world tour riders, and um, the only real big name pro Conti lad was um, Grimai, he had a top ride today as well, which is always good to see, but this is the right hand corner that they, so yeah, left hand corner that they take into the bottom of the climb, Nicholas Ede was up the road the whole day, he's on the front now, everyone's looking around, and to be honest, this is like Every single time they hit this climb, it was 6.8 watts per kilo, for, according to James Knox. And I think the last one could have been harder. Eddie Dunbar um, is basically comes back uh, from a sort of third group on the road, and he attacks pretty hard on this climb. And, I mean, he got distance before, um, so, you know, probably not the strongest guy, but it's clearly quite a big move. You can see this absolutely mad uh, corner in the race convoy. But anyway, Dunbar's up the road. Champazan sees it. James Knox sees it. And both of them are like, this looks like a good move, uh, so let's get across, uh, which I think w was probably quite quite wise. Um, it really did force a selection, this move, actually, um, because before this, it was quite a big group, and everyone didn't seem too interested in attacking, but as soon as you see three major teams go up the road, then everyone's decided, okay, yep, we've got to go, and Champers then had some really, really good legs today. He was attacking really, really hard, and he's really impressed me this season, to be honest, uh, in his early season results, uh, which was... Uh, which was impressive to see. I uh, I think what he won. Oh, he, uh, he came. Bono Desh, he came second, and Laguelia today. He had a top top result as well. I was getting confused with Paris Pontre, um, who did win Giro de la Marseille. But anyway, Nairo Quintana's got his teammate on the front. I believe is Eli Gesbert, uh, who's chasing it. But there doesn't really seem to be much panic in there. But as you didn't see in the helicopter footage, and you're just about to see James uh, Eddie Dunbar. Um, has got caught uh, by the peloton because he basically got dropped. And Bernalis is like, all right, we got to go. Uh, this is the remnants of the bunch, but basically irrelevant. Don't need, I don't know why they show this, but we'll get we'll get back to the to the climb. And Bernal decides that actually it's time to go as Danny Dunbar has been dropped. And it's just Champersan and James Knox on the front now. And Bernal does an absolutely huge attack. And he looked really, really good. This week in training, our last week in training, sorry, he did 390 watts. 20 minutes which is absolutely huge uh, and on his wheel is the classic bobbing style of Balcom Molimer and this is the main selection here you can see like Quintana can't get across Nibali was struggling as well Chicone made it across as well with Bernal uh, and Bernal goes straight past him and I thought okay here we go this is going to be the winning move he's going to attack across Either one person might be able to follow him, but probably not. But Champazan, who'd already attacked on this climb, follows Bernal, and they were absolutely flying up this climb. Uh, it's amazing that Bernal's got this gas back already. It's quite early on in the season. I guess he's targeting the Giro, so it needs quite a lot of intensity. But Champazan was the only guy who could follow him. James Knox is absolutely killing himself to get across this gap, but it just doesn't happen. Um, and Bernal and Champazan basically come across the, the climb uh, on their own, uh, and then take the descent. But behind, I think it, they didn't really have a huge gap. A lot of people attacking across. I believe that's Chicone and Knox just behind. Uh, and then they uh, Trek had a pretty good represents representatives here. They had like Chicone, Nibli, um, and Molimo, which was more than any other team because um, I think Rodriguez got dropped for Ineos. But Bernal's out of every corner is absolutely driving on the pedals, looking really, really strong again, which is good to see. He says he still has quite a lot of back pain, unfortunately, um, but he thinks that maybe in the next couple of seasons he might be able to get rid of it. But for now, he just says, you know, it is what it is. We're going to have a bit of back pain, but around these hairpins, he's just trying to, you know, distance the group as much as possible. You can see the gap here is not crazy. Um, there's still quite a lot of rides. And this descent 
wow, it was mental. There was gravel, there was everything. Champazan was taking as many risks as he could. And Bernal was like, mm, nah, no risk for me, please. Uh, he doesn't want to crash out in front of the Giro. Um, but Champazan was really pushing the limits here. You can see sort of going on the bit of gravel there. And Bernal was like, nah, 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 that's not happening. But they couldn't distance the bunch. The bunch managed to get across. Um, and you can see they're really not very far behind. And like, as, and the run-in is um, to the finish line. There's like the climb I said before, the Capomelle, which is like three you know, 2k, 3%, it's like nothing major, and the rest of it's pretty flat along the coast, so nothing really, you know, if they're in sight, it's going to be hard to stay away, and you can see here, that they just didn't really have the impetus, which I thought was odd, because I thought, you know, Bernal is actually a really good descender, and Champazan looked like he was willing to risk everything, but I think maybe they just knew there's no point committing now, um, it's better to wait uh, for the final, and then they can, you know, I guess, see what happens to use there, um, and refigure out what sort of tactics they want um, but we're getting towards the end of the descent but I thought I'd put it in because it's just absolutely crazy uh, classic Italian descent with a lot of hairpins but also just really terrible road surface but as they turn left onto towards the coast this is where you've got to keep your eyes out for attacks you know everyone's been stressed uh, on the climb the descent's been very you know stressful as well just in terms of not necessarily physical energy necessarily but also just mental energy and you can see here Trek already have two riders here uh, with Ciccone and Molema and Nairoman, we skipped forward a couple of kilometers, Nairoman is also there and looking quite good actually. And he sort of you know, hops off the front, Wanty Group, Wanty Circus Group Gobert are also chasing as well. Landers there, Bilbao, you know, it's like, ugh, could could this break go away? But then out of nowhere, two, two, this is like, I haven't skipped forward, they just find Molema and he's just absolutely flying off the front. And I was like, Lombardia, Lombardia, he won Lombardia, exactly like this, similar finale in terms of like downhill run, climb and I was like San Sebastian same thing attacked he did actually attack on the downhill he's good at this and I was like watch out and that was literally it like Grimai is there Champuzan uh Lander Bernal and they were all trying to get across to the group that he attacked from so he was slightly up the road anyway and uh this is almost more or less it I mean I was sort of and was like ah it's gonna be hard it's gonna be hard but you know, they didn't have time gaps to begin with, but the way they were chasing behind really didn't look very good. And on this Capomella, I mean, he's just absolutely driving himself. He's not pretty to watch, let's be honest, but he's very, very effective. I think he's got better and better, realizing that GC is not really for him. Like, okay, he's good. He can, you know, in 2016, maybe, arguably, I think he probably should have got third. But at the same time, you know, on these one-day races, that's where he's got his best results. San Sebastian, Lombardia, and now Trofeo Laguelia. And you can see Gramai is just looking behind, trying to figure out who's there. Um, Van Sevenens, who's a super young rider, he was there. But we skipped forward to the climb, and he basically managed to get a 27-second gap on the coast road. And I was like, that is pretty strong. But on this climb, if they race it properly, they could get within touching distance. Because if, like, you know, one of them, like Bernal, etc., does, like, a super mega hard attack, like, all out to try and get across, um, then he would. And this is what Bernal does. From the bottom of the climb, decides we've got to go. And I was like, oh, we're back with Bernal. Like, no one's getting close to him. And the gap he got uh, straight away was actually not that crazy. Like, Grimai goes on the front straight away to try and, um, you know, chase him back. But Champazan looks up under his shoulder and is like, yeah, that's it. Madawai's on the back here for FDJ. He looks like he's struggling a bit. Ciccone as well is just like, I guess he does, just needs to follow every move. And Lando, again, is looking pretty pretty decent uh, in, his result, uh, in his form at this moment in time. And burnout, you like the gap didn't really decrease that much. And I was like, surely it's an error. Surely burnout's gonna hop across this gap, no worries. But I just don't think burnout has that like punch at the end because the gap didn't go down. Uh Molima kept on riding and and the gap here was like three, four seconds. I was like, ah, surely, like what has happened? But I think Champazan was just really, really strong. And he was just dragging everyone back to Bernal the whole time. Um, and he's on the front here. And he didn't really ride very, like, tactically astute necessarily. Like, I, in my opinion, he probably should have just attacked across to Bernal. Instead, he just got on the front and just absolutely drove it. And I was a bit like, you know, okay, it's a steep climb. But they still went 20k an hour up there. So it's like, I don't know if that was necessarily the best decision. Because you're still going to get a draft sitting on at around 20k an hour-ish. But the gap here is still not big. But now it's like, oh, I've just got to go full. It doesn't really matter what everyone's doing behind. If they want to get across to me, then they can get across. But the race is going to go up the road if I don't start, if I don't close this gap. And, you know, now he's got 10 seconds back. So it's like, okay, fair, maybe. But it's it's not long enough. Like 2K, 8%. Like 
to get a 30 second gap, you've got to be doing mad, mad numbers. But you can see Grimaya gets dropped here, unfortunately. Uh, Van Sevenens is looking like he's in trouble a little bit. Chikone was also looking in trouble as well. But Chikone, he like, all he knows he has to do is just try and stay with the group. And then, you know, there's a good chance he'll be able to, you know, launch the counter, you'd hope, if Molima get caught. And at this point, you're like, okay, 17 seconds, that's possible, it's possible. But the issue is we're almost at the top, at the top of the climb. Uh, it tops out with, you know, like, I think about nine and a half K to go, if that. Uh, and on the descent, Molima, like, he doesn't look like he'd be good at descending. Like, if you just saw him, you'd be like, man, a bit dodgy, can't really hold himself on a bike properly. But now nah, he's he's properly good on the old descents. And this is the sort of elite for Van Sevenens, Lander, Champuzan and Burr. Now, Chikon is behind trying to get across. Grimai gets dropped here and he gets dropped bad. And I was a bit disappointed because he did quite well last year, actually, in La Guelia. And I really think he should get a world tour contract. Um, but people don't seem to want to touch him with a barge bolt, even though he's the only junior to ever beat Remco. Uh, but Lander's now on the front again, is, you know, just setting a good tempo. Van Sevenens is all over on the bike. And I think the thing is, you don't actually get a good sit on this climb. You know, I was saying like Champagne. Shambuzan maybe shouldn't have gone on the front because they do get a draft. But at the same time, like round the hairpins, you don't get a great sit because you've got to you slow up slightly and then it's a big acceleration out of it. So it's actually not super, super easy um, to follow on the wheel if the guy rides annoyingly. So they're like free wheel into it and launch out. But obviously, that's not very effective in chasing Monoma, who's still off the front. And he's just like, he just sets the tempo. Like he knows, okay, it's a four or five minute climb. We just sit at like 6.8 watts per kilo, 7 watts per kilo, which is what they were doing on every climb. And then, you know, get over the, over the top, just take the risks on the descent, you know, go absolutely max and then whack it along the coast. And um, it's really hard to bring someone back because if you think about it, like if he's, let's say, just riding steady state, 380, 400 watts, well, to bring a 20 second back, gap back in like when he dis finally descends, there's about six kilometers left. You've got to be riding at 430 on the front. So if everyone has to do 430 on the front, you just need a moment's hesitation and then it goes up to 450 and no one's going to be doing that. So it's like, you know, once you're off the front on these things, if you've proven yourself to be as strong or almost as strong as everyone else, or in you could be stronger, then it's actually so hard to bring them back because you need everyone working absolutely max to bring them back. Because otherwise, if they're working at 80%, they're doing 350, 360, rolling through, then, you know, you're not going to catch him. Because well, Molomar knows that all he has to do is just bury himself. And look at the pain face on him. He's, he's just absolutely killing himself. And the gap hasn't come down. It dropped down to like 15, 16 seconds and then just went back up. And now Shampuzan's on the front attacking again, but this isn't how you're going to catch him. Come on. You have to attack from the bottom and see if you can get across. You're not going to close 19 seconds in the last like 400 meters of the climb. And it does get a lot steeper here, which is maybe his thinking. I could distance like some rivals and then maybe it guarantees me a, a, top, a top three. Um, but Lander again is looking so strong there. Um, and that's the top of the climb. Where's the red GPM points? And Land and uh, Molima zips up his jersey a little bit and gets ready for the absolute roller coaster ride of his life as we go down some dodgy Italian descents with some crazy, um, with just potholes everywhere. And um, there's Bernal Ciccone. But anyway, we're going to skip forward because pretty much nothing happened. They all just stopped, st like walked around, looked around, sorry, like, oh, I'm not going to chase, I'm not going to chase. And he just soldered it to the line. And it was just like a classic Molima, just, just wax it. Says, cheerio, lads. I'm just going to do an absolute full TT to the line. And that was pretty much it. I mean, cheerio. Thanks for coming. Um, the final climb was the decisive thing. They couldn't get away. Chikone was in the group. Grimai got dropped. But all the rest, like Van Sevenens and Shamsam, were all there. And they came in about 45 seconds behind, which we'll, which we'll have a look at. Um, we'll call in the sprint. But I think it's a really impressive win by Trek Fredo. They won it with Chikone last year. Um, and here's Lander on the front. And to be honest, like on this group, Bernal is the strongest sprinter. Like, he has actually got a really, really good punch. So I was a bit confused why um, certain people were leaving. Like, Landers just shouldn't really be leaving out. Shambazan, again, maybe he could could do okay. Um, but I think the person to watch was uh, Bernal. And I think Chikone thought maybe he's fresh. He did have an all right punch. He did want a Giro sprint um, against Jan Her, But Jan Hurt's hardly got really you know, a punchy man. But anyway, Bernal comes off the draft here on the left-hand side and just absolutely smokes everyone, really. I mean, yeah, it's a long sprint here. And no one's really getting close. Um, Van Seven is did all right. But anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this video. It shouldn't get taken down as Rye have exclusive rights. So should be mint. Anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy. Like a subscription and a like. And we'll see you in the next one.